he's just so faithful. I mean, I'm going to be sharing a little bit. And for those who have never been in our church service before, who's, I see some faces that I do recognize. Well, besides you, Eric. Um, <laughs> anybody else who's never been in one of our services, thank you for coming. But they said they made reference to it. In January 21st, I died. Literally, I had a heart issue. I was dead for, they know, nine minutes. I had no oxygen. That is, that's proven by the doctors. And then they did resuscitation in six zaps, is what I like to call it, trying to resuscitate me. And it took an hour for my heart to actually kick in. Mike did CPR. He broke six of my ribs. I still haven't forgiven him. Um, that's my husband. I can say that. But uh, <clears throat> like I said, as Tim was referencing, he should not be here and I shouldn't be here. But you know what? Each one of you were born for this day. Amen. And when I went to be with Jesus for just a short period of time, he said, I can't let you die. You were born for this time. So I'm letting you know you were born for this day. Say, I was born, I was born. for this day. this day. I mean, that's exciting to hear. Amen. I mean, we so often just think it's, oh, it's just something that's happened. No, you were born for such a time as this. And I'm excited that you're here to be a part of this. And I'm also excited that I've learned throughout my years, what am I, 29? That if we honor God, don't laugh, Quentin. When you honor God with your life, when you give him first place in everything, say everything. I love how the Father gives us something back. And I can relate to that as a grandma. I'm sorry, i got to stand to my side when I talk about being a grandma. When my granddaughter does what I tell her to, I start reaching for stuff. And I know Elkie and Troy are now grandparents. It's amazing how they wrap us around their fingers, their hands, their legs, whatever they have. Because we love to reciprocate because they're being so wonderful. And our Heavenly Father does the same thing for each one of us. He loves to bless his kids. And when we seek him first, he gives us something wonderful. And it's called the commanded blessings. Say commanded blessings. Amen. Now I know you're sitting there going, oh, this is a woman preacher. Does she even know what she's talking about? Yes, I do. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28. Turn to that, verse 8. Deuteronomy 28, verse 8. And I'm going to encourage each one of you, jot down these scriptures. Again, if you were to come to my house, and even in the midst of what I dealt with January the 21st, even the law enforcement people that were all in my bedroom, they said, why do you have, they said to Mike, why do you have all these scriptures up? That's just the way I live my life. I like to see them and call them out because they pertain to what I'm dealing with at that moment. So Deuteronomy chapter eight, 28, verse 8. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It said, the Lord will command the blessing. That's where I'm getting commanded blessing. He will command the blessing on you and your storehouses. Now, right now, I want you to know we have the giveaway coming up in December. Be ready. We're going to be packed. We're going to have the interstate building. But right now, I have six storage units jam-packed with things to give away. And I'm telling you, that's the way God wants us to be. That we have an overabundance because we are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. So let's go on. On your storehouses. And in all what you set your hand to. Look at your hands. Everybody look at your hands. And you're like, why do I have to look at my hands? Because Jesus wears your hands like a glove. So when your hands touches anything, guess what happens? It becomes blessed. Sometimes I walk around like this. Whatever I'm touching is blessed. God, I thank you. I'm blessed. No more incidents, and I'm getting skinnier every day. Thank you, Jesus. But, it, oh, you weren't supposed to agree then. And in all that you set your hand, but look at this next part. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. Where are we right now in the land that the Lord our God has given us? Amen. I read that and I get all emotional. I was up here doing worship and it took everything I had not to just burst into tears. 
And it's not sad tears, it's rejoicing tears. So again, we're talking about the commanded blessing. And I want you to understand, I put everything in southern terms. You Yankees do not know how to talk right. <laughs> and so this southern girl's got to come in for us to understand. So the commanded blessing is like a magnet. It took forever to find one big like this. It's a commanded blessing as a magnet. And a magnet attracts things, right? Yep. Yes, am I wrong? And it attracts something. And what the commanded blessings that we get from God attracts is blessings upon our family. Are you excited about that one? How about financial abundance? Restoration. And I looked at it and I thought, what is restoration? Joel chapter 2, verse 25. Write that down. It's a scripture that we all know. It says, he will restore to us the years that the locust has eaten. That's restoration. Now, I don't know about you. There's been times, there's been times in my life when it didn't seem like years, it seemed like decades. The, the locust has been eating on me for decades. But when I seek him first, keep my eyes on him, then all of a sudden he restores to me those things that have been taken. Amen. He also gives us miracles. How many of y'all need miracles? Amen. I'm needing some miracles. And then how about a double portion? <clears throat> Again, didn't know about it, so I looked up Joel. Joel said that a double portion means that someone receives a gift twice as much as what is given to someone else. God, thank you for the double portion. And then also, the other thing that I have written down, because it's all shown in Joel, that it also attracts the favor of God. And I love the favor. I love that I walked into Montana title with nothing but my word. And I said, we've just been given Barnabas Ministries. What do I have to do? And I knew they were going to say, well, you're going to have to produce this, and you have to sign this, and you're going to have to do that. And they said, we can start on it right now. And I said, I have no proof. And they said, it's okay. We know you're all right. So let's go ahead and transfer the building. And I thought, all these people with homes, I'm going to walk in and say, you know what? Pastor Nancy's just giving me her house. <laughs> but you see what it is? It's the favor of God. Say, I have the favor of God. The magnet of God attracts that to me. Hallelujah. But the thing that I love about this is you and I don't have to go after the blessings. So often people seek the blessings and not the king. But all we have to do is keep him in our focus. Keep him in our hearts and our life. And then the right people will find us. Then we're going to see the right opportunities come across our path. And then we're going to be able to so walk in the favor that we'll have people giving us deeds that we didn't know we deserved. And then we're also going to see that we can walk in wisdom. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't know what to do. We sound like Eeyore. I don't know. But I'm telling you, when we have the, the presence of his commanded blessing on us, we're going to know what to do. We're going to have wisdom beyond our years. And then we're going to see that the blessings of God are tracking us down. Say, they track me down. They track me oh, I promise you they do. And it's because you become a magnet for God's goodness. Right on. We draw this to us. And you say, well, when does this happen? I've been doing with the Lord 25 years. Well, with that attitude, probably not well. <laughs> but you have to be determined. Say, determined. determined. In your heart, right. in your life, that you're going to keep Jesus first. Good. Now, for your reference to that, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. I don't seek the things. All I do is seek him. He knows what I have need of. Because then when we seek Jesus, 
He will send us the commanded blessings that will chase us down. His favor that will overtake us. And then out of nowhere, suddenly your house is paid for. Say amen. 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 Your bills are paid for. Say amen. amen. And I'm going to give you an example. As you guys know, January 21st, I had some medical bills. I had some medical bills because of January 21st. And I even shared with you, I don't know what God's going to do, but I know he's going to provide. And we paid for a, a portion of it. And we were short about two grand. And I went to Mike and I said, I just want to let you know, we're short two grand. I'm so sorry. And Mike said, I'm not worried. God's going to take care of it. About a month ago, July was a wonderful month. Thank you, Jesus. It's a time of freedom. I get a phone call from my insurance company, Samaritan. And they said, you know what? We were looking over your records, and we saw that we paid you, but we shorted you $2,000, and we're sending you a check right now. I was like, one insurance company says, oops. I couldn't believe it. Totally unexpected. And I'm telling you guys, we need to expect the unexpected. It's not a lucky break. It's not a coincidence. It's the commanded blessing that God has put on your life. And like a magnet, I love this magnet. I'm going to use it. I bought it. I, like a magnet, we're going to attract the goodness of God. And see, the thing is, is that God's put that in our hands. And all we have to do is say, Father, I receive it right now. Hallelujah. Because when we walk in God's ways... When we determine in our heart to please and honor him and no one else, these blessings, they're going to chase us down and overtake us. Okay, now your scriptural reference. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 2. Again, write this down. I hope I see it when I come to your house and go to your bathroom that you have it all over your mirrors. Because this is the way we have to live if we want to see change. All right, Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 2. It says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all of his commandments, what I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Well, that's wonderful, but let's listen to verse 2. And all these blessings, say all these blessings, all these blessings. shall come upon you and overtake you. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. It's not me saying it, it's God. If you got a problem, talk to him. He wrote it. I'm just telling you. And I'm telling you that Deuteronomy 28, we're going to get in a lot more scriptures. It's telling us of his love. It's telling us of his provision. He's telling us about his favor that will track us down. So I'm telling you, promotion is on the way. Provision is on the way. No matter what you have need of, he will supply it. Divine connections. They're going to search you out. I feel like Tim and Jackie are divine connections. I'm not going to try to embarrass them, but I'm going to. They went to Jerry Savelle's Bible school just like Jesse and Michelle. And Mike and I went. They were not married at that time, so we were their chaperones. But really, I just wanted to go. And... Uh, <laughs> They were sitting at the same table, and we started talking. Of course, their pastors in Idaho, we were in Montana, and we told them what our heart's desire was. It was to see some things, and they bought archery tag for our church. They're looking for a building, but guess what? It's tracking them down. Amen? Amen. You're, you're doing that one too, Tim. You got, you got something, and I'm getting twice as Amen. Amen. And that's what you should be saying as well, not just Pastor Tim. And it's because you and I are a God magnet. Say, I'm a God magnet. And we're attracting the goodness of God. So often we think God's so bad that he beats us up with a big stick. I don't know where you learned that. I'm going to teach you from Bible school. God good, devil bad. There you go. You just saved two years in Bible school. If it's bad, it's the devil. If it's good, it's God. Amen? And you're saying, but right now I'm facing an illness. I understand that. 
It doesn't look good. The doctor's report was not in any way encouraging. Well, I'm telling you, you can say, I'm never going to get well and I'm going to die. Or you can do like what, well, what I have done is raise my hand and say, Healing, you're looking for me. Here I am. Amen. Restoration, you're tracking me down. Here I am. I mean, I start talking to things because I know that the world was created by words. And if God had to say it in Genesis 1, then I can say it now in 2022. Amen. And then maybe you're struggling with your finances. I wanted to encourage you with what happened with the hospital. But I'm telling you, you may think you're never going to get out of debt. But I'm telling you, don't say that. Start declaring the word of God. Thank you, Father, that you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. But even more than that, abundance, you're looking for me. I'm over here. And then favor is so mine that you're tracking me down. I want you, if you don't feel comfortable, I understand, but just put your hands like this and say, abundance come to me now in Jesus' name. That's right. I declare that your houses are paid for. I'm still looking for a house. I know there's some people in this room that are as well. Father, thank you for the abundance to pay what this, uh, this valley gives us to offer. Thank you, God. But I know that over my life, if I look at it, I realize that I didn't go after things. I had the most wonderful parents in the world. I, was, I lived in a house where my parents just never, my dad was a doctor and he never charged anything. And they taught me how to give. And when I would come into the house and I'd say, Dad, I need this and I need that. And he said, well, I appreciate you telling this, Father, but I want you to know he'll take care of you. Let's pray right now. And they taught me how to go after Jesus. And when I learned that whole thing of that was what the word of God said, I just went after him and it was amazing. Things came to me. I didn't even have to ask. I didn't ask for this building. I would never ask for this building. But you know what? God know, knows what we have need of. Right. He knows what you have need of. Whatever you have need of, just say, Jesus, this is what I need. And I promise you, if you seek him first, he'll give you more than you could ever imagine or think. So here's your scriptural reference. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. I'm th speaking from the King James Version. It says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. I think somebody already used this scripture today. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power of that works in us exceedingly abundantly. I can do pretty good thinking, but he's saying he's going to go above that. He's going to go above that for you. So what I'm trying to tell you this morning is that his presence, his favor, his anointing, all those things that we hear about, it's more important than your talent. Right. You know, I, I appreciate people that have talent. I mean, I, I sang for the President of the United States. I appreciate that. But you know what? Doesn't make diddly squat. All I have to do is be concerned about the kingdom of God. Amen. And then it may be more important than your educations. I have a master's in music. Woohoo. All I need to know is that I serve the master. And he'll take care of everything else. You know, I'm not a Rockefeller. I'm an Ectorling. Say that real fast. <laughs> but I'm telling you the last name the family we come from isn't what makes any difference it's the body of Christ it's the family of God that's what's important and you may be looking at your situation and thinking it's never going to change again Pastor Jesse took my, my whole thing and we think it's just going to always be the same but everything we're looking at in the natural is subject to change. And the fact that you look at something and it doesn't look possible, that makes God excited because he loves doing the impossible for his kids. But our job is to keep Jesus the center. Our job is to make certain that he's glorified. And then when we do that, we become a blessing magnet. Another scripture, Psalms 84:11. I'm going to read it from American Standard Version. Psalms 84:11 says, No good thing, say no good thing. No good thing. 
will he withhold for them that walk uprightly? Amen. Say, that's me. that's me. I walk uprightly. I walk uprightly. I mean, I love it. Because what I'm trying to tell you is one touch from Almighty God changes everything. In a split second, then what we could do on our own. Oh, you can sing? Oh, I'm so glad. I have an education? Wow, so proud of you. My last name is Rockefeller. Oh, good, I'm glad. But I'm telling you, we have to keep honoring Jesus. That's the name above all names. That's the one that makes the difference. And then when we do that, we will draw on the goodness of God and it will cause the blessings, the commanded blessings of God to come into us. But I want you to know those commanded blessings, they have your name on it. They have your name on it. That means I'm not going to get your blessing, I'm going to get my own blessing. Because the blessings have your name on it. And you say, well, Denise, when is this going to happen? I've been doing this for a while, and I haven't seen a change. Well, you know what? Proverbs 30, sorry, Proverbs 13. I was sharing with uh, Tim this during uh, Archer Tag yesterday. Proverbs 13, verse 22, amplified version. It says, the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually, say eventually, into the hands. Look at your hands. Of the righteous, for whom it was laid up. I like that. I can take eventually. That means it's on its way. It also tells me that it's been laid up for the hands of the righteous, and you and I have been made righteous because of Jesus Christ. And Jesus has already laid out the blessings for us with our names on it. He's given us overcoming blessings. And that's for you and for me. And again, when we get so saturated with his presence, we become like a magnet and it's all drawn to us. All of his promises, we know the scripture, all of his promises are, yes, there you go. And I appreciate that he's given me that promise, but I'm not going to seek the promises. I'm going to seek the promised man. Jesus knows what I have need of. So I'm going to keep hard after him. I'm going to put him first place in my life. And then he will allow these blessings to come into our hands. The main thing is for you to realize we don't need to beg Jesus for anything. We're not beggars. I feel so honored that we were able to teach the kids, and I'm sure they're even downstairs singing it. I am a child of God. Do you all remember that during VBS? We need to realize we're children of God. Say, I am am a child of God. God. Oh, my goodness. We have royal blood flowing through us. We're wearing a crown of favor. I told Mike, the reason that we have favor in our life is because you're wearing a crown, and everybody looks at you like, what is that on your head? But I'm telling you, that's the crown of favor. People recognize it. The world recognizes it. That's why when you walk into a place, people sit up and take notice. And it's because God has called you. God has equipped you. God has empowered you, and he has chosen you for this day. Don't think you're a mistake. Don't think that he's overlooked you. And you haven't even begun to touch the surface of what he has in store for you. And it's because his favor, his miracle commanding blessing is tracking you down. Another scriptural reference, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 21. It says, trouble chases sinners while blessings chase the righteous. You're being chased down, guys. And in my favorite is Psalms 23, 6. We all know it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I want you all to turn around and say, hey, goodness, hey, mercy. It's following you. It's chasing after you. Whenever I have been in situations that have not been that wonderful, I look around and say, goodness, mercy, come on, let's go. God's explosive blessings are coming your way. And I'm going to try to say this without crying. One day you're going to look around a room like this, like you are today, and say, God, how did we ever get here? 
Thank you. And you're going to look around your house, or you're going to look around your family and say, Jesus, how did we ever get here? Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Because Jesus has already released his blessings to us. And the more we seek him, the more we're determined that nothing is going to take away him from our lives, it turns up the power of the magnet. And so we can be so far from what God has for us, and man, it zip ties it quickly to us. So I don't want you to get discouraged. I don't want you to say, well, this only happens because you're a church, or this only happens because your name is Reverend. No, I'm telling you that what God has for you is bigger and better than you can ever imagine. I'm telling you that it's going to happen sooner than you can ever, ever think. Because God knows what he's doing. And he knows how to bless his kids, just like this woman knows how to bless her granddaughter. I do it because I love her. And even when she's naughty, I still bless her, which I shouldn't. But I do. (laughs) And God still blesses you, even when we're naughty. He loves us so much. But our job is to keep believing him, keep magnifying the king. Oh, Roberts used to say something, and I don't know if Pastor Nancy would remember this. Something good is coming to you. Remember? Guess what we're going to say this morning? Something good is coming to me. Let's say it again. Something good is coming to me. Guys, it's time. It's time for us to realize, even though the devil tries to kill us, even though the devil tries to make us in debt, Even though the devil will lie to you, I'm telling you, we have become a magnet for God's goodness. We've become a magnet for his commanded blessings that all have our names on it. I want you to walk out of here today telling people, I'm a magnet. They'll probably look at you like, oh, you just got back from church. You know, and that's fine. But it's, oh, thank you. You found that funny. Thank you, sweetheart. But it's time for us to realize God has put his blessings, his hand, and his favor all over you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around. Maybe you're in a place where you've never asked Jesus into your heart. And you're saying, I want to be a part of this commanded blessing. How do I do it? You just ask Jesus in your heart. It's that simple. The age of seven, I asked him... And I learned more and more about him. And at the age of 17, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then things just started multiplying even more. But I'm telling you, if you've never asked Jesus in your heart, and today you've decided you want to make him first place in your life, no one's looking around. Just raise your hands right where you are. I want Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Before we go on, I'm going to pray for these people because I want them to hear with the ears that God has given them. Say, Everyone say, Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I I need you. you. I'm asking you you to become the Lord of my life. life. Rule over me me. and make me me. in your image. image. In Jesus' name. Right now, you're saved. Whether you think you are, you are saved. Now, this is the next part. Maybe you've been like me where you question, God, why isn't things working? I thought I was dedicated. I thought I was just seeking you on occasion. But today, you want to change, and you want to make certain that he's first place in everything. You just want to give him your all in all. If that's you, raise your hands right where you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Father, you see these hands. You see their hearts. And I ask you right now, Jesus, to touch them. Let them know that they are loved by you. And that, God, all the things that they have had happen in their life, that, Father, you're there to rescue them. You're there to correct, to fix, to restore, and to give them back the years that the locust has eaten. So, Father, we give you the praise and the glory. Just say with me, dear Jesus, Jesus, I love you, you. and I want you to rule over my life. 
right now in Jesus' name. Guys, it's a new day. Hallelujah. It's time for us to start rejoicing in the goodness of God. Because that goodness follows after you.